Zueli Lawrence Mkize is a South African medical doctor and politician who served as the Minister of Health from May 2019 until his resignation on 5 August 2021. He previously served as the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs from 2018 to 2019. Before that, he was the 5th Premier of KwaZulu-Natal from 2019 to 2013. A former anti-apartheid activist in Umkonto Sizwe, Mkize was formerly a provincial politician in his home province of KwaZulu-Natal with particular influence in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands. He was a member of the Executive Council in the provincial government between 1994 and 2004 and was elected provincial chairperson of the African National Congress in 2008. He rose to national prominence in 2012 when he was elected National Treasurer General of the ANC at the party's 53rd National Conference. He also campaigned unsuccessfully for the ANC presidency ahead of the 54th National Conference in 2017. As Minister of Health under President Cyril Ramaphosa, Mkize played a central role in South Africa's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, he resigned in 2021 amid allegations that he and his family had benefited improperly from a state contract awarded by the Department of Health to a communications company called Digital Vibes. Zueli Lawrence Mkize was born on 2 February 1956 in Willowfontaine on the outskirts of Peter Marisbeck in what is now KwaZulu-Natal province. He was the fifth of seven children. He belonged to the Zulu Mkize clan, formerly of the Nganda region, but by the time of the advent of apartheid in 1948, his family was bound to farm labor by a labor tenancy agreement. His father later worked for the Parks Department of the Peter Marisberg Corporation, while his elder brother worked as farm hands. But Nkiza continued his formal education. He attended secondary school at Langeswa boarding school in Zululand, where he was a strong student. He later said that the anti apartheid protests of a local eccentric, David Cecil Oxford Madiwane, sparked his interest in politics. In 1976, the year of the Soweto uprising, Mkize began medical school at the University of Natal, where he was a member of the Students' Representative Council. He graduated with an MBCHB in 1982, completed his internship at McCord Hospital in Durban in 1983, and began work at Edendale Hospital in Peter Marisberg in 1984. By the mid-1980s, Mkiza was a member of Mkonto Sizwe, the underground armed wing of the anti-apartheid African National Congress, and was connected to other NC figures in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands, including Harry Gwala. He went into exile in Swaziland in 1986. According to the Daily Maverick, his departure from South Africa was related to police attention to Operation Butterfly, the code name for an MK plan to bomb important infrastructure in KwaZulu-Natal. Eleven other people involved in the plan had been arrested in late 1985 during a government state of emergency. While in exile in Swaziland and then Zimbabwe, Mkize continued to practice medicine. He often treated wounded MK combatants. He also continued his work with MK, and by 1987, he was a commander in charge of underground cells which operated in KwaZulu-Natal. He returned to South Africa in 1991 after the NC had been unbanned by the South African government. He initially worked at Temba Hospital in what was then the Eastern Transvaal, but opened a private medical practice in Peter Marisburg in late 1990. Mkize, along with his MK colleague Jacob Zuma, became an ANC peace broker in the ongoing political violence in KwaZulu-Natal. ANC-aligned groups and Nkata-aligned groups fought each other in the region throughout the negotiations to end apartheid. From 1991 to 1994, he was also a member of the ANC National Health Secretariat, which was tasked with formulating health policy for a post-apartheid South Africa. After South Africa's first democratic elections in 1994, Mkize was appointed member of the Executive Council for Health in the provincial government of KwaZulu-Natal, one of the two provinces where the NC did not win a majority in 1994. He held the post for a decade, becoming the longest-serving health MEC in the country. His tenure coincided with the peak of the HIV-AIDS epidemic in South Africa, which was particularly severe in KwaZulu-Natal. Under President Tabumbeki, the government's 
response to the epidemic was criticized as unscientific and influenced by HIV AIDS denialism. In the submission of Pekisisa Center for Health Journalism, Mkize was at times both hero and villain in this context. Mkize deviated from national government policy in allowing the Center for the AIDS Program of Research to conduct ARV treatment trials in public clinics in KwaZulu-Natal. However, in 2001, when the Treatment Action Campaign sued the government for its failure to provide service to prevent mother-to-child transmission of HIV, Mkize begged Mbeki in opposing the lawsuit. This was attributed to Mkize's apparent unwillingness to break ranks with Mbeki publicly. In November 2004, Mkize was appointed MEC for Finance and Economic Development. Under his leadership, the provincial department implemented austerity measures which were considered successful. While in MEC, Mkiza reportedly formed a close political alliance with Jacob Zuma, who became National Deputy President. He was elected to the NC National Executive Committee, the party's top executive organ, at the NC's 50th National Conference in December 1997, and he was re-elected to the NC National Executive Committee in 2002 and in 2007. He was considered one of the main architects of Zuma's rise to the NC presidency over that period, having helped engineer an influx of pro-NC members to the NC in KwaZulu Natal. He also served as chairperson of the NC National Executive Committee's subcommittee on education and health and was a member of the NC task team on national health insurance. However, his most prominent role in the NC was at provincial level in KwaZulu Natal. Having served as the NC Provincial Treasurer General, he was elected NC Deputy Provincial Chairperson by 1999. Before and during his term as finance MEC, he was at the center of a political battle with Bundebele, then the premier of KwaZulu-Natal and the provincial chairperson of the ANC. At the ANC's provincial elective conference in June 2008, Mkize prevailed and was elected ANC provincial chairperson. In his capacity as provincial chairperson, Mkize began ANC's candidate to replace Ndebele as KwaZulu Natal Premier in the 2009 general elections. The ANC won control of the KwaZulu Natal legislature in the 2009 elections, and Mkize was indirectly elected Premier, beating Joint Steinhazen of the Opposition Democratic Alliance by 68 votes to 7. In the same month, May 2009, he was appointed Chancellor of his alma mater, which had been relaunched as the University of KwaZulu Natal. He ultimately served in that post until 2017. In May 2010, five men were arrested in Hillcrest, KwaZulu Natal, on the basis of a criminal intelligence tip off while allegedly on their way to Mkiza's home in Peter Marisberg. Illegal firearms and ammunition were found in their vehicle. They appeared in court in Durban on weapons charges and the charge of conspiracy to commit murder. The alleged target of the conspiracy was later identified as Mkize. In addition, one of the men, Sizo Mkize, of no relation, had in his possession a document which appeared to implicate provincial leaders of the Tripartite Alliance, the ANC, and its partners, the South African Communist Party and the Congress of South African Trade Unions, in a plot to overthrow Mkize. The Hawks investigated the case, and the KwaZulu-Natal structures of the Tripartite Alliance conducted their own investigation through a joint task team on which the NC was represented by Willis Mkhunu. The findings of the task team were kept confidential. The court case against the men was struck off the court roll in November when the state failed to send a prosecutor to the trial. Mkize had also encountered Sizo Mkize in 2007 when he claimed that he and other headmen had been hired by Mkize's provincial rivals to assassinate. In May 2012, the KwaZulu Natal UANC unanimously re-elected him as the NC provincial chairperson. His re-election, followed by a minor political scandal concerning a leaked intelligence report compiled by Richard Mkhize. The report said that Mkhize, along with other NC leaders, were plotting to depose Zuma as the NC president. Although Mkhize said there had not been any such plot, the Mail and Guardian said that the report had damaged Mkhize's relationship with Zuma as well as his popularity. In KwaZulu Natal. In the first half of 2021, beginning with an expose on 23 February, 
The Daily Maverick published a series of reports by investigative journalist Peter Lewis Mayberg on what became known as the Digital Vibes Scandal. The report concerns state contracts between the Department of Health and communications company called Digital Vibes. The company had received $150 million from the department between January 2020 and February 2021 for work on campaigns for the national health insurance rollout and COVID-19 response. It also had received a communications contract from the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs in August 2018, several months after Mkise took up that portfolio. Some of the charges on the digital vibes invoice, including from Kizer's media appearances, appear to have been inflated. More controversially, the company was linked to two Mkiza's associates, Tahira Metha, Mkiza's long-serving personal spokesperson, and Nadira Mitha, a former assistant private secretary in Mkiza's ministerial office. Both had also worked as communications consultant on Mkiza's 2017 campaign for the ANC presidency. About 90 million of the 150 million received by Digital Vibes had been channeled to other accounts, either to entities set up by Metha or Metha, or to third parties, including businesses and personal accounts held by Metha's immediate family. In late May, Mkiza said that the external investigation had found that the tender and the bidding process for the contract had been irregular and in contravention in the Public Finance Management Act. However, he maintained continuously that he had not participated in awarding the contract, that he had not benefited personally from it, and that Metha and Mitha were not his personal friends. Later that week, the Daily Maverick published further reports purporting to show Mkiza's personal connection to digital vibes. According to the newspaper, the company had paid for maintenance work at a property owned by Mkiza's family trust, had transferred at least 300000 to a company owned by Mkiza's son, and had bought his son a second-hand Toyota Land Cruiser. On 9 June, President Ramaphosa put Mkiza on special leave to allow him to attend to allegations and investigations concerning the digital vibes contract. Although he continued to maintain his innocence, Mkiza resigned as Minister of Health on 5 August 2021, hours before Ramaphosa was expected to announce a cabinet reshuffle. He later claimed that Ramaphosa's associates had influenced the investigation in an attempt to, I quote, clip my wings. As of May 2022, he was seeking judicial review of the SIU's report, which was made public in September 2021. At that time, the SIU continued its attempt to recover the amount of the contract through civil litigation. However, in April 2022, Parliament's Joint Standing Committee on Ethics and Members' Interests cleared Mkize of any wrongful conflict of interest in the scandal. As noted by the Daily Maverick, Mkize is sometimes mentioned as a participant in the political violence and even political assassination that continued in KwaZulu-Natal after the end of apartheid, but these allegations have never been proven or prosecuted. The stench of assassination would end up clinging to Zulim Kise, even if the accusations did not stop. Most recently, in September 2018, Mkise's home in Willowfontaine was reportedly raided by a task team responsible for investigating political killings in KwaZulu-Natal. Although Mkise's spokesman disputed that it was a raid, describing it in as an interview between the police and Kiza's private security firm. According to the witness, the investigation concerned the role of private security companies in political assassination, and the raid involved the arrest of one of Kiza's crew and the confiscation of various valuables. Ahead of the 1999 general election, Inkata, by then rebranded as Inkata Freedom Party, claimed publicly that Mkiza used underhanded methods to promote ANC recruitment in KwaZulu-Natal Midlands, even going so far as to promise IFP defectors weapons or amnesty from prosecution. Early in 1999, David Ndombela, an IFP leader in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands, accused Mkiza of a conspiracy to murder him. A local activist had reportedly signed an affidavit saying that Mkiza had given him a submachine gun and told him to use it to kill Ndombela and then claimed the murder had been in self-defense. 
However, the activist in question later retracted this claim, saying that Ndombela and the police had intimidated him into making a false statement. Shortly after Ndombela lodged his accusation, the network of independent monitors published a report which claimed that Ndombela and another opposition leader in the province, Sipiso Kabinde, had been informants for the apartheid security police. Opposition politicians claimed that the report was an attempt by NC's propaganda machine to distract attention from the allegations against Mkize. In April 1999, the Sunday Tribune reported that the SIU intended to charge Mkise and several other provincial politicians, including the IFP's Philip Powell, on grounds related to political violence. National Prosecuting Authority denied that charges were imminent, but confirmed that Mkise was under investigations on suspicion of gun running and conspiracy to kill Ndombela. The incumbent Premier of KwaZulu Natal, Lionel Mchali of the IFP, responded with a proposal to establish a commission of inquiry to investigate the allegations against Mkize, but failed to do so after Mkize successfully applied to the High Court to interdict the move. In November 2003, Mkize said that he had laid a complaint with the public protector in connection with the April 1999 Sunday Tribune report. He implied that Bulelani Nguka, the National Director of Public Prosecutions, had leaked word of the investigation to the media in order to tarnish Mkize's reputation. At the time, the NPA said that the 1999 investigation had been initiated by the South African Police Service and had been referred to the NPA, but the Director of Public Prosecutions in KwaZulu Natal had declined to prosecute Nkize because of a lack of evidence. In January 1999, Sifiso Nkabinde, a United Democratic Movement activist in KwaZulu Natal, was shot dead in Richmond, KwaZulu Natal, by anonymous gunmen who apparently carried weapons stolen from the Peter Marisbeck police station. Later that week, apparently in retaliation, Mkize was ambushed by gunmen while traveling in an ANC convoy with Peggy Tele. In subsequent years, several men, many of them affiliated to the local ANC, were charged and convicted of murdering Kabinde. In one of those trials, in 2000, Mkize was implicated in the assassination by one of the accused, Sibusiso Bruce Mtlongo, who was formerly Mkize's bodyguard. Mtlongo said that Mkize had been involved in planning the murder and had offered a 200,000 reward for its execution. However, under cross-examination, he admitted that his testimony was hearsay because he had not directly spoken with Mkize but had only heard of his involvement from his associates. Mkize was asked to testify in court in March 2001 but outlined his account in an affidavit instead. He denied any involvement in the murder and said he had not conspired to kill Gabinde or offered a reward to his killers. Indeed, he said that young NC members often approached him to request weapons with which to target Gabinde and other opposition politicians in retaliation for earlier attacks on the NC, but that he refused these requests. He said that he only had been approached about Gabinde's killing after it occurred when the perpetrators had approached him asking for payment. In 2008, Mkize successfully sued Media24 for defamation after one of its titles, City Press, reported in 2007 article that Mtlongo had told the courts that Mkize had promised him thousands of friends in exchange for Gabinde's assassination. Mkize said, and the High Court agreed, that this was misleading since Mtlongo's claim had been hearsay. City Press paid Mkize 150000 in damages and published an apology. In 2017, journalist Reddy Klabi claimed in her book, Kwezi, that Nkize had attempted to convince Fezekile Kuzwayo, best known as Kwezi, to drop rape charges against Zuma in 2005. Mkize, like Zuma, had known Kwezi and her family in exile. At least two former NC politicians corroborated Klabi's claim. Fakey mentor said that Mkize had been Zuma's pointsman during the trial, and Bazi Mashilowa said that Mkize's role in the Kwezi matter is well documented. In a statement, Mkize provided a detailed account of the saga from his perspective, denying that he had exploited Kwezi's trust in him. 